The Sony A90J OLED is currently one of the best TVs money can buy, that is, if you have the funds. What if you could achieve near master series level of performance with even greater brightness for about, mm, say, half the price? If you're into saving money, hit that like button and subscribe because we're going to jump right into the good stuff because today we're reviewing Sony's new X95J 4K LED TV. <laughs> I'm going to keep the spec talk brief because we have a lot of ground to cover. The X95J is a full array LED backlit 4K display that has Dolby Vision, HDR10, and HLG support. It has Sony's own cognitive processor XR, and that is the exact same tech that made its debut in the X90J OLED we reviewed not long ago. You also get next-gen HDMI features like 4K 120, though sadly, it is limited to just two HDMI inputs, one of which it shares with its ARC eARC functionality. The X95J uses the Google TV operating system with access to streaming apps like Apple TV, Netflix, HBO Max, and more. Obviously, it has support for Google Assistant and Apple AirPlay, not to mention Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. There's Sony's superb acoustic sound tech and calibration, which I'll get to, but enough about the specs, and let's get into how the TV actually performs. Out of the box, there are two things that are immediately apparent with the Sony. One, it's bright, and two, it is very clear. While folks all over the internet were doing brightness runs to show off how an OLED could finally break the 1000 nit peak brightness barrier, the X95J can hit 1000 plus nits easily, even on non-HDR out of the box. In fact, every picture profile is capable of around 1000 or more nits of peak brightness with little to no adjustments. While not the brightest LED-based 4K TV on the market, it's bright enough that I doubt you'll be left wanting for more. Out of the box, that's pre-calibration, the most accurate picture profile is custom, which measures a little over 300 nits, which is not exactly bright, but stick with me. This profile has the most accurate white balance and color, both measured a delta E or margin of error of about six. A margin of error of three or less is where we want to be in order to meet the threshold of calibrated, but honestly, six isn't too bad when you consider that other profiles, like Vivid, have a delta E of 16 or higher. The good news is you can supercharge the custom profile by setting the brightness to 100. Follow that up by turning auto local dimming to medium or high and setting the peak luminance to high, which ups the brightness ante to over 800 nits without completely destroying the TV's white point or color accuracy. In fact, the TV actually improves a little using these settings. Now, obviously, if you have the tools, you can calibrate the X95J to near perfection. I was able to achieve a Delta E of well under one, which is near as makes no difference, perfect, and matches the capability of the X90J Master Series we raved about. When watching HDR content, the Sony's peak brightness doesn't really change, though the setting that is going to have the greatest impact on brightness is that peak luminance setting. If you don't feel like your X95J is as bright as it could be, I would check that setting first before worrying about whether or not your TV is busted. Now with the X95J dialed in, I set out to test some of its other claims, starting with 4K 120 support. With my PS5 connected directly to one of the X95J's 4K 120 capable HDMI inputs, I was able to take advantage of HDR gaming in 4K at 120 frames per second with zero issues when playing Call of Duty. Input lag was a non-issue for me, but then again, I'm not a competitive gamer, so you may feel differently. There's definitely no lag in me getting my ass kicked. So apart from that, the X95J isn't really flexing when it comes to gaming features, at least not at the moment, as many of them seem to be promises that will be fulfilled later in updates rather than usable features I can share with you all in this review. All that said, if you are a casual gamer with no desire to turn pro, I doubt this TV will disappoint you. If you are a hardcore gamer and live in a world where milliseconds separate life from make-believe death, maybe this isn't going to be the TV for you. Stepping away from gaming and re-entering the real world, where content is often broadcast or stream in 4K 30 or 60, if we're lucky, the Sony positively shines. Honestly, post-calibration, with some minor exceptions surrounding black levels, absolute contrast at the extremes, and issues pertaining to local dimming here and there. 
I doubt many would be able to tell the X95J apart from the X90J OLED. My feelings of awe over the X90J's cognitive processor carried over to the X95J. Sony's AI-based enhancements result in an image that is just crazy good. HD to 4K scaling is next level. When watching Oblivion on HBO Max, which is in lowly HD, the film looked like a native 4K signal, a native 4K HDR signal at that. The image is so naturally sharp and detailed. Colors are bang on, with skin tones looking especially natural, organic, and possessing an almost dewy-like smoothness that made close-ups particularly pause-worthy. Fine textures and clothing and hair rendered with no visible artifacts like moray and jaggies. Contrast, excellent, and while Oblivion isn't necessarily a low-light torture test, scenes taking place in the library or scab hideout were especially impressive, possessing OLED-like black levels with almost master series contrast throughout the blacks. Fine details in these low-light scenes rendered with surprising clarity, especially considering that the signal was of the streaming variety, where we all know compression can sometimes wreak havoc on low-light scenes. Motion was smooth, and this is with a lot of Sony's motion interpolation settings set to low or off. While I typically do not advocate for any sort of motion interpolation in TVs, Sony has tailored their usage in this tech in such a way that it doesn't feel invasive or, or artificial. So kudos, Sony. Stepping up to 4K HDR content, as you might expect, the X95J shines. I just love the way this TV tackles color. Watching shows on Apple Plus like The Morning Show, Ted Lasso, and Schmigadoon, the Sony never failed to impress. Like with Oblivion, colors were accurate, natural, and popped off the screen. Even with a highly stylized show like Schmigadoon, it never felt artificial or like the TV was purposely enhancing the color. But you don't have to be a stickler for color accuracy in order to appreciate what Sony is doing here and why they continue to be such a major player in the professional cinema space. Don't get me wrong, it's not as if other TV manufacturers don't get color Right, but in my opinion, few manage to toe the line between being poppy, which viewers no doubt like nowadays, and accurate to the filmmaker's intent, quite like Sony's latest crop of TVs. Skin tones, again, looked especially convincing, as did detail and textures. Black level contrast in detail felt a bit more confident when viewing 4K content in HDR, especially Dolby Vision content. But the differences are subtle. A quick note about Sony's internal sound system. It's impressive, as in very impressive. On its own, and when in the cinema sound profile, the X95J has enough talent to give one a, a soundbar-like presentation with an even surprising amount of ambient and surround sound cues that in small to medium-sized rooms may be enough for you. It's only when switching to other speakers or systems like the HTA9 do you really realize the gains that can be had in making even mild investments in a separate sound system. Compared to separate speakers, you realize that the X95J's sound, while good, is a bit thin in the mids, where it prioritizes high frequency detail and low bass punch over outright linearity. So intelligibility, quite high, and bass is surprising, but overall, this is a TV with a crazy happy smile-like curve to its response. Now, local dimming is one area where I think the Sony pulls up just short of being master series level great. When viewing real world content in HD or 4K, I doubt many will have any issues with Sony's local dimming. It's actually quite good. But when viewing test patterns or when subtitles are visible, especially in low light scenes, blooming is very noticeable. Believe it or not, I noticed the Sony's somewhat lackadaisical local dimming most when playing video games, where many of the game's heads up displays could have visible halos kind of surrounding them when on screen. This isn't a deal breaker, at least not for me, because I don't go around playing with all of these menus on the screen 24 seven. But the lack of reference level local dimming is bound to be an issue for some, especially those of you who rely on subtitles, so I am mentioning it to you. It wouldn't stop me from buying this TV for myself, but it is one of the biggest tells that you're not watching a master series display. Other gripes that I have include its use of Google TV as an operating system. What did you say? I know, YouTube's biggest supporter of Google TV doesn't like Google TV. The X95J has all of the chops to run Google TV and run it well, but the platform is 
buggy. At least it is here. For what it's worth, the same thing happened on the Master Series. I couldn't get certain apps to run or recognize my login credentials no matter how hard I tried or what alternate methods I use to circumvent having to log in through the TV itself. Apps like Apple TV and Sony's own Bravia Core just didn't work. If you're a Google TV power user and run into similar issues, I recommend using a third-party Google TV device like, say, an NVIDIA Shield, or you can attach an Apple TV 4K like we did to circumvent the buggy Google OS inside the Sony. Moving on to connectivity, I wish all of the Sony HDMI inputs were full HDMI 2.1, especially considering that one of the two compatible ports is also the port that has EARC, meaning if you're using a soundbar or surround sound system like the Sony HTA9, you're really only getting one HDMI 2.1 port, which is an epic fail. But if you're not a gamer or obsessed with the latest bleeding edge video tech and just want to watch television and movies in the highest possible quality in 4K, you're gonna be fine. But yeah, this current trend of going halvesies on HDMI ports is getting really annoying. Lastly, and this is now the third Sony TV we've reviewed where notable features like variable refresh rate are TBD, pending a firmware update. And I have to say, it's starting to anger me. I would have more respect for companies if they just came out and said, hey, our product doesn't do this. It will never do this. And frankly, we're okay with that. But instead, they're promising everything and the kitchen sink to consumers to appear competitive in a retail setting when the reality is, if everyone would stop claiming they need every device they buy to make coffee and walk the dog, we could get off this cycle of broken promises. But if you tell me that I'm going to get something, I'm holding you to it. And as of this review, features like VRR remain a pipe dream. As for how the X95J stacks up against the competition, well, the X90J Master Series OLED is still the best Sony display and arguably the best 4K display money can buy right now. If I were to give products a ranking, the X90J would be a 9.5 out of 10, with the X95J coming in at a solid 8.5 to a 9 in comparison. I honestly think, despite not being quite as good, that I would buy the X95J 95J over the Master Series because I found it to be a little less fussy with respect to image setting and achieving maximum brightness level. Not to mention, it's cheaper. The 85 inch variant reviewed here retails for just under four grand, whereas a comparable Master Series OLED will run you double. For those of you who watched our Sony A9 review and were surprised by our lack of enthusiasm when using the X95J as a center speaker, we know what everyone wants to know. Is the OLED better? I don't know. We weren't able to test that TV with the A9, but those speakers were very good. So it is possible that the A9 and the A90J OLED could be a better match. Can you use the X95J as a center with the A9? Yes. It works, we just didn't see the pairing as game changing. Now, compared to less expensive options, like our Vizio P-Series Quantum X, you are going to save about $1,000 over the Sony. You're also going to pick up some pretty hefty gains in the brightness department, not to mention have a full suite of next-gen gaming features that the Sony just outright lacks. That said, when watching movies, as good as I think the P-Series Quantum X is, I believe the Sony is better. It's more refined and more lifelike. Could I live with and be happy with the Vizio? Yeah, of, of course I could. We use it as our daily driver, and when connected to our Apple TV or Nvidia Shield, I have zero complaints with the Vizio. But if I were shopping for a new reference LED 4K TV and the extra $1,000 didn't scare me away from the Sony, the video file in me would pick it over the Vizio. With respect to Samsung and their latest crop of 8K TVs and whether or not you should splurge for 8K over the X95J, we have the QN800A 8K TV in-house and are just beginning our evaluation, but I will say this. The Samsung, especially at 85 inches, is impressive with respect to its brightness and it calibrates to the same level of perfection as the Sony maybe even a little bit better, but it's not a perfect TV by any stretch. You'll have to wait for my longer, more final thoughts, but needless to say, with the lack of readily available 8K content, I completely understand why splurging for an 8K TV may not make sense for you, 
especially given what we know about hardware and standards and how they can change as new technologies work their way to market. As for LG, the 90 series nano cell, which comes in an 86 inch, is probably the most comparable. I've been a big fan of LG nano cell TVs. However, we have not had the chance to demo any of LG's new 2021 models, so I can't say how they compare head to head. I will say this. The LGs are less expensive and you may get better gaming features than what the Sony has reviewed here. Returning the focus back to the X95J, I, I love it. As impressed as I was by the Master Series OLED, I'm actually more impressed by the X95J. Because this is an LED TV after all, and yet it gave me Master Series vibes. Plus it's half the price. While the X95J isn't perfect, especially if you're a hardcore gamer or one that needs to be on the absolute bleeding edge of display tech, but the X95J is packed with enough wizardry that current video files and movie lovers will no doubt be wowed each and every time they turn it on and hit play. So yeah, this TV is definitely recommended. So that's it. That is now my review of the Sony X95J 4K LED TV. But now it's time to find out if Christy liked it. I freaking love this TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm obsessed mm -hmm. with skin tones. Mm -hmm. And this TV is among the best I've ever seen when it comes to skin tones, even straight out of the box. Mm -hmm. And that's with, you know, zero calibration or whatever. I'm not even sure if you just automatically put it on custom when it... When we got it home or like when it got out of the box? I did because I just, I've been around Sony TVs for so long. I know that custom is always the most I mean, you accurate. do, you, yeah, you have a tendency to just automatically go to like the filmmaker profile or, yeah. or something like that yeah. right out of the box. But again, no calibration, no adjusting, just turn it on, hit play. Mm -hmm. Really impressive. Yeah. Um, even movies, even old movies mm -hmm. like The Mummy. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, Rachel Weiss, her skin mm -hmm. was so, oh my gosh, it was perfection. It was so glowy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's an old, old movie. Well, it was shot on film. That was pre digital. So it was shot on film. And I believe because they were going for that B movie aesthetic from back in the day, while they didn't use Vaseline on the lens, mm -hmm. you know, they did use Promis filters uh, on in front of the anamorphic glass. And that's always going to make the specular highlights on cheekbones, women especially. It's just going to soften it up. But what I loved about the mummy, the scaling was great. We already went over that in the review. But the mummy has mad film grain mad film grain and a lot of times when a lot of um, video processors get involved inside of tvs they mistake film grain uh, for like digital compression macro blocking things like that and those settings try and really smoothen that out and the mummy was really sharp except for the times where the focus puller missed focus but it was really sharp but the film grain was 100 percent intact and i thought that was really impressive i agree i agree you know one thing i think is worth mentioning that I don't really feel like gets enough attention when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, channels that review, review televisions mm. is the size mm. of the television. Okay. So I don't know if people watching at home understand this or realize this, but the majority of review samples that get sent to people like us are either 55 inch in size maybe 65 inch yes. if you're lucky, Yeah. right? Well, we, I mean, look, if you watch this channel, you know that we we like big televisions. Right, they photograph better. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's a thing. So, <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. So every time I reach out and ask for a TV to review, mm -hmm. I always kind of demand mm -hmm. that they send us the bigger ones because yeah. If we have to live with this thing, which they're kind of a pain. TVs are hard to review. Yeah, they're hard to review. They take a lot of time. They take up a lot of room yes. with their boxes and stuff. I know. First world problems. Yeah. You're, 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 I'm sure you're all playing the world's tiniest violin right now, but <laughs> this is the life of a, a reviewer. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing that you need to know. Like, I don't really care how many zones a TV has at say 65 inches, right? Right. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I don't really care what ratings claims that that, that TV is, is rated at because right. they are only reviewing 65 inches. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. Um, when you're, when you're talking about brightness, mm -hmm. 
how something rates or scores or what it measures, sorry, yeah. how something measures in 65 inches doesn't always translate to these larger displays. No, it does not. <laughs> so when you're roasting us over our reviews, yeah. please keep that in mind, okay? But um, one thing about this t television is mm -hmm. that it it really, really looks great, mm -hmm. even though we're, at, we're looking at an 85 inch. And when he talks about brightness, when you're talking about brightness, yeah. when you also consider that this is an 85 inch display yeah that makes it even that much more impressive yeah and i and i do want to point something out not only about the size of televisions but this sony specifically you are absolutely 100 percent right i think with the exception of maybe vizio and the p-series quantum x which is one of the things that made it such kind of an impressive tv from a brightness standpoint is a lot of times the the led light density is obviously higher with a smaller tv and the zones become finer. And so you do get arguably slightly better performance with 65 inch or 55 inch TVs than with 75 inch or greater because so many manufacturers don't really up the ante with respect to backlighting as they get bigger. It's actually pretty rare. And that's why when you see bigger TVs, you'll notice if they disclose how many zones they have, the zones Which they rarely, rarely do nowadays because the internet doesn't know how to handle it. Um, you'll notice that more often than not, the zones are less as the TV gets bigger, and that leads to blooming issues and things like that, less control. Now, I will say this, the Sony does have some blooming issues with really bright things next to really dark things, obviously, like subtitles, like we talked about. But with respect to brightness, in now going back and asking friends who also review TVs in this space, you know, hey, what findings did you get knowing that they had the smaller ones and double checking? This TV is remarkably consistent, 65, 75 to 85. So that's a really good thing. Okay, I wanna talk about real world content because I think this is gonna matter to some people. Okay. Specifically sports. Oh. So I am a huge college football fan. Yes. <laughs> like my Saturdays are spent watching college game day mm -hmm. and the Longhorns. Speaking of, we need to wrap this up because we have a game to get to. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I just want to talk about that for really quick. College mm -hmm. football in 4K on this TV mm -hmm. is chef's kiss. Amazing. It is definitely worth splurging. The upgrade to, is it YouTube TV? We have YouTube TV and we do pay the extra fee to have the 4K, which... There's very little shows on YouTube TV that are in 4K, but when it comes to Saturdays and Sundays, football, Fox, Fox broadcasts, and I think ABC broadcasts of sports are in 4K, and oh, so it makes a difference. So much better. Yeah. But if you are stuck watching the lower res broadcasts, like, and let's be honest, most sports is yeah is in like 780p or 720p it's, yeah. Uh, yeah it's terrible yeah um this tv i thought i think does do a better than i would say average job mm -hmm. um at at the scaling yes uh, i mean look you know sports in my opinion anyway looks pretty terrible on almost any television because yes. it's such a low broadcast signal mm -hmm. um but i think this one does a pretty good job especially at 85 inches oh absolutely absolutely as far as news programming goes and just like regular television, mm -hmm. TV shows, I think it's great. Yeah. All right. So that is now our review of the Sony X95J 4K LED Smart TV. What would you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, got a question of the day for you. And that is, do you think the Sony X95J can really compete with the Master Series OLED? And, and do you think Sony will ever give people the gaming features they've promised? Let us know. Sound off in the comments below. I am really curious what you all think. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Doing all of that really helps the channel. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that's a great way that you have also shown your support for this channel, and we thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it. And like Christy said, we got to get out of here because it is game time. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound or sight of your system is you. So happy listening, happy watching. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.